All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and today we are tackling the Drake May conundrum, man, because he's quarterback one in some people's eyes, and then he's not even a first rounder in some other people's eyes, and then there's a lot of people somewhere in between. Some people feel like he's the best quarterback in the draft. A lot of people feel like he's two or three, and then you even have a couple of people that feel like he may fall further than that so we're going to take a look at what a lot of top draft analysts are saying about the unc quarterback we're going to dive into draft analysts big boards mock drafts quotes everything is drake may the most polarizing draft prospect in this upcoming 2024 nfl draft advanced stats that are in favor of drake may and also working against drake may we'll dive into all of that as well but before we dive into everything Make sure you stiff on that like button, stiff on the subscription button, and stiff on the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Stay tuned. I was thinking about doing a Jaden Daniels version of this video as well. So let me know in the comment section by the end of this video. You know, of course, wait till we finish the video and you hear me out on both sides and things like that. If you want me to do a Jaden Daniels version of this, taking a look around the NFL and what everybody's saying about that prospect, like the highest he could go, the lowest he can go, why, all of that type of stuff. So let me know that at the end of the video. Of course, stay tuned for my more mock drafts. I have a lot more updates coming out as far as the commander's concerned. Anything random that happens with the commanders, I'm keeping y'all updated on that. So make sure you stay tuned for everything. I'm super excited. It. Let's go ahead and get to this video right now, though. Let's go ahead and get to it. Let's get it. All right, so let's start with the draft analysts that are high on Drake May. Let's start there. First of all, seeing from NFL draft files, quote, everything Caleb Williams can do, Drake May can do better, unquote, is what one former NFL scout has had to say about UNC quarterback Drake May. Quote, he's got the raw size, arm, and athleticism that GMs lay awake at night dreaming about, unquote. There's belief in media circles that Drake May is quarterback one in the 2024 NFL draft because of these tools, despite concerns over how he handles pressure. The last time the Bears took a USC quarterback in Mitch Trubisky, it didn't end well. However, on the off chance they do so again, I personally believe they be getting the best quarterback in the draft. That's one glowing review. We have several of those, more to come. And then you have Tim Hasselback straight up just saying, on NFL Live, Drake May is the best quarterback in this class. Point blank, period. Better than Caleb Williams, better than Jaden Daniels, better than anybody else that's available in this class, which is really interesting. And then the reason I even saw that Tim Hasselbeck said that is because Deami Brown, the commander's wide receiver that, of course, went to UNC and was the wide receiver for Sam Howe. But, of course, he was also there when Drake May was first coming in as a high school recruit and things like that. So maybe there's some bias there as well. But current commander's wide receiver, ex-third round pick Deami Brown, also feels like Drake May is the best quarterback in this class. Very interesting. But most importantly, Tim Hasselbeck said it from NFL Live. Then you have Ian Cummings, who's a super duper draft guy. That's what he does. He said, quick QB reminder, Drake May is my QB1. Caleb Williams is essentially my QB1B. They are very close. Both great in similar range to CJ Stroud from 2023 being his QB1 last cycle on his board. Ultimately, both are worth franchise quarterback investments at the top of the draft. So that's Ian Cunnings right there. And then you have Nate Tice. He thinks Drake May is the better pick for the Bears, just point blank, period. Nate Tice has been on the May train as his quarterback 1A and Caleb Williams, his quarterback 1B, for quite some time. And as of a couple of weeks ago, he's doubling down on that stance. And it's really interesting, too, because he's not just completely hating on Caleb Williams with his takes. He just basically views May's size and ability to attack the middle of the field as just better attributes. And so people are now throwing out there, should the Bears just trade back a pick or two and potentially still get Drake May, knowing that the commanders probably prefer Caleb Williams? Really interesting. 
Then you have Joe Clatt. He spoke very highly of Drake May in the first round. He said, quote, Drake May to me without Williams in the draft would be a slam dunk number one pick in the draft. He compared Drake May to Josh Allen and doesn't see a world where he falls past the second pick with the Washington command is really interesting. So Joe Clatt feels like basically that Drake May it may not necessarily be better than Caleb Williams, but if Caleb Williams didn't exist, he would be the slam dunk number one overall pick without question. And even with Caleb Williams' existence, he feels like Drake May should not make it past the Commanders at the number two overall pick. Don't forget, I did a whole video breakdown on how Colin Cowherd on his show said that the, not only will the Washington Commanders draft Drake May and that he's basically literally Justin Herbert, but he also said that, well, even before getting to the division part, he said that basically as far as Justin Herbert goes, he feels like Drake May is like Justin Herbert and CJ Stroud as to where they're going to be better at the NFL level than they were in college. And then he also predicted that the commanders will win the division as long as they draft Drake May. He loves the coaching staff, all that type of stuff. Again, I already did like a full over 20 minute breakdown of those comments. We went section by section for that. But you have Colin Cowherd comparing Drake May to Justin Herbert, which is a top five at worst top 10 quarterback. Longtime NFL scout and executive Mark Ross said that Drake May is basically a Trevor Lawrence for coming out of college. Really interesting. Then you have Bleacher Report. They feel like he's the number three overall player. They feel like he's the number one quarterback. And then they say his pro comparison is literally Justin Herbert. They love him. Then ESPN has their own big board. And Drake May's fourth on that. He's the second quarterback there. They said May drives the ball in the tight spaces with great accuracy when he throws with a strong base and gets the ball out in rhythm. He keeps his eyes downfield while moving around the pocket and makes plays under duress. He can extend plays, locate receivers late, and make off-platform throws. May takes unnecessary hits and can do a better job of protecting himself by getting down sooner as a runner and throwing the ball away quicker when nothing is available downfield. His footwork is inconsistent. Two, there's too much unnecessary movement which causes him to miss on occasion. So those are the positives and negatives, but they feel like he's the fourth best player. They feel like it's Marvin Harrison Jr., Caleb Williams, Rome Madunze, and then Drake May. And then after that, you go all the way down. And if you're looking for Jaden Daniels on that list, he's 10th. So he, they feel like it's a pretty considerable gap between Drake May and Jaden Daniels, but not as much of a gap between Caleb Williams and Drake May. And then you have pro football focus. They have Caleb Williams is the best prospect. Marvin Harrison Jr. is the second best. And then they feel like Drake May is the third best prospect. And then again, for reference, Jaden Daniels is all the way down to, I'm still scrolling, 22nd. They feel like Jaden Daniels is the 22nd best prospect in this draft. So they feel like it's basically Caleb Williams 1A, Drake May 1B, and then Jaden Daniels a distant third. Then take a thon. Feels like Drake May is the fourth best prospect. Of course, the second best quarterback. Caleb Williams number one, Marvin Harrison two, Joe Alt third, and then Drake May fourth. Really interesting. Then you have the athletic, well, specifically Dane Brugler. He has Drake May as the fourth best prospect here as well with a little bit of a different mix up. Caleb Williams, number one, Marvin Harrison Jr., number two, then Malik Neighbors, number three, and Drake May, four. And then Jaden Daniels is eighth. So not as low on Jaden Daniels as a few of the other draft analysts and big boys that we've looked at, but still really interesting. And then you have Sporting News, or more specifically, Vinny Iyer, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, has Drake May as the third best prospect, only behind Marvin Harrison Jr., number one, Caleb Williams, number two. And he said May has a nice combination of accuracy and athleticism reminiscent of new commander starter Sam Howe, another former Tar Heel. May is a much better passer with a more ideal frame to handle pressure at a higher level level really interesting and also you know me as a georgia bulldog fan seeing brock bowers in the top five consistently i'm loving it man i'm absolutely loving it and then lastly daniel jeremiah and the reason i wanted to save him for one of the last ones is because he typically does his mock drafts based on what he's hearing around the league more so than what he actually 
thinks. Now, granted, this is a big board, so maybe things are a little bit different, but Daniel Jeremiah typically adjusts his rankings and mock drafts to what he's hearing from executives, scouts around the NFL. His goal is to predict what's going to happen, not give his opinion of what should happen, more like a Mel Kuyper or something like that. Daniel Jeremiah is instead always like, let me try to give y'all what I think will happen based on what I'm hearing behind the scenes. He has Drake May 4th, Caleb Williams number one, Marvin Harrison second, Roma Dunze third, again, like somebody else did earlier, and then Drake May fourth. That's the exact same order as somebody else, just a couple of analysts back. He said May has prototypical size, athleticism, and arm strength. He has quick feet and quick hands, but his delivery can get long at times. He's a gifted thrower who drives the ball without much foot space in the pocket, including with def the defenders hanging on him. He can take pace off the ball on swings and shallow crossers. He has a nice touch on bucket throws down the field. He is athletic to escape and create with his legs, and he's tough to tackle in space. He's an ultra competitive as a runner, something he'll need to dial back a bit at the next level. His pass protection wasn't good last season in North Carolina, and there weren't always answers in the route to bail him out, which led to some poor decisions and carelessness with the ball. Overall, May has some things to clean up, but he has every ingredient to be a top tier starter at the game's most important position. And then Daniel Jeremiah has Jaden Daniels right behind Drake May as the fifth overall prospect. So I just want to keep reminding y'all that, keeping y'all updated on where they have the other guys as well now moving on let's talk about some stats that are in favor of drake may before we get into how draft analysts are low on drake may and then some stats that are working against drake may so some stats that are again working in his favor when you're talking about first down carries on third and fourth down the last two years drake may has the most by far out of any of these top quarterbacks drake may has 42 second place bo nix with 31 caleb williams third with 23 Jaden daniels fourth with 22 and then jj mccarthy 14 michael Penix jr 12. but basically dane brugler is bringing up the fact that drake may doesn't get enough credit for his ability to create with his legs and to keep things moving keeping the offense on schedule because again he has the most first down carries out of any of the draft quarters um, quarterbacks on third and fourth down these last two years now granted Jaden Daniels was very low the first year and then exploded onto the scene this year but if you're talking about consistency and again overall Drake may has the most also Shouts out to my boy Josh Taylor over there. Make sure you follow him on Twitter. Subscribe to him on YouTube everywhere. He brings up some really good stats about Drake May. May finished with the most big time throws in college football last year. The most. Number one. He was also second in deep yards with 1,452. And at the same time, he only had a 1.9 turnover worthy play rate, which was 13th out of draft eligible quarterbacks which is really good like you want to be as low as possible for a stat like that that's really interesting also take a look at this graphic right here when looking at college quarterback prospects big time throws versus scramble rates drake may is up there in a world of his own with justin fields and josh allen it's like literally those three guys are like the most of that thing that combination of those two things more than anybody else by far but it's interesting though because sam howell is like the next closest thing even though he's still not really close but he's the next closest ben fennel on twitter also brings this point up too drake may is fantastic managing free hitters things happen quickly you better know where to go how to help yourself drift and drops quick footwork get it up and out fast no long motions and know you're likely going to get crushed so basically he's providing the point and he shows some evidence some clips of like drake may basically having like free rushes coming at him like there's just probably more often than most draft quarterbacks probably out of any of the top draft quarterbacks he's always dealing with somebody coming through completely unblocked just completely just let go free rusher free hit you know you're gonna get blasted when you throw this and drake may he argues is probably the best at managing those free rushes either making something shake in the pocket real quick to move out the way extending the play or even just sitting back making an accurate throw ignoring that pressure and knowing you're gonna get hit and that's big time for the nfl also vz brings up a good point on twitter that people use playing in the acc and not doing anything noteworthy in college as a negative against drake may but let's not forget that patrick mahomes and jared golf both had losing records in college against not so great competition as well that's a pretty decent point now let's go to the draft analysts that are low on may 
And it's really interesting because Lance Zerline said that he had, feels like Drake May is probably going to end up dropping in this draft. Like somebody asked him the question, do you think Drake May falls out of the top three? And then he said it's very possible. Yes. Really interesting outside of the top three. So the commanders and Patriots both need quarterbacks. And for some reason, Drake May would not get taken by either of those two teams. So I'm assuming that with all of this J.J. McCarthy hype that's going on right now, that Lance Zerline is thinking that maybe J.J. McCarthy goes to the Patriots and maybe we draft like a Jaden Daniels is in the commanders. Really interesting. Then you have firstroundmock.com. Well, more specifically, Daniel Kelly in his synopsis of Drake May. He said that May will not see a second contract from a team that drafts him if he goes top 17. First of all, let's break down the fact that he said if he goes top 17. Let's start there. And then on top of that, he says if Drake May does go top 17, which is just crazy because I just assumed that he would. He's saying that he will not see a second contract and basically he's just going to be a waste of a draft pick going that high in the draft. Really interesting, man. And then... Now there's one talent evaluator saying that Drake May probably is the quarterback that's most likely to fall in this draft just in general. If there's any quarterback that when you're looking at mock drafts and you're seeing him at this part where he will actually end up getting drafted in real life once the draft comes around late April, they feel like Drake May probably has the biggest gap potential, the biggest fall potential. Really interesting, man. And then a Vikings reporter said, pointed out the fact that over the last seven, 10 days, his stock has fallen from being a consensus top two quarterback to potentially being the fourth quarterback off the board, just out of nowhere, all of a sudden, no games being played, no combine yet, no pro days, no nothing, just out of nowhere. I guess more people started to watch the tape or whatever, or maybe it's just draft fatigue or something like that, who knows, but suddenly Drake May to some people's eyes, probably a lot more people than a lot of y'all probably think don't see him as the second best quarterback. Definitely not the first quarterback. A lot of people are starting to definitely feel like Jaden Daniels is the second. And then some people out there are even starting to believe that J.J. McCarthy is going to end up being drafted before Drake May, which is really interesting. I don't know where this is coming from. That whole J.J. McCarthy is Joe Burrow if he threw the ball more. I, I mean, I'm just not seeing it. I don't know what's going on there at I don't get it. I, I don't at all. And then, shouts out to my boy Linnell Willingham for pointing this out. Drake May's flaws as a prospect are so similar to Howe's. Getting through progressions quicker, footwork issues that impact accuracy on simple throws. Correctable flaws that can be coached up, but it's going to take longer. Needs reps. Jaden Daniels' legs will help early. Good point. And then when you're talking about comparing Drake May to Sam Howe, shouts out to Commander's crew for pointing this out like wait like over a month ago when you go to draftbuzz.com and look at their breakdown of drake may who does this exactly remind you of excellent scrambler however he often takes too long to decide who to throw to putting huge pressure on the offensive line he's often slow in his progressions and has trouble with some relatively simple coverage rotations and when his first read isn't open he struggles to get to the next guy needs to refine his base mechanics through passes avoiding a narrowed rotation that can impact throw efficiency footwork sometimes shows inconsistency particularly in pocket navigation leading to a loss of stability and accuracy and then lastly prone to making risky decisions under pressure occasionally resulting in turnovers or forced throws in challenging situations Again, who does that sound exactly like, Commanders fans? Really interesting. Now, let's also take a look at some graphics that work against Drake May. And if you look at this graphic right here, when we're talking about on-target rate by throw depth, you have total, you have five yards, you have six to 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 21 to 30, and 31 plus. There's a reason Drake May is at the very bottom. Now, granted, Sam Hartman is terrible, six to 10. Austin Reed was terrible, 11 to 15. But just in general, when you're looking at this chart, Drake May is just all around like one of the worst. That's why they have him ranked 15th out of the top out of all of the quarterbacks, even like a Quinn Ewers who's not even coming out this next season or even below a Joe Milton 
that's scary man that's really scary so that's a very scary graphic that's the type of thing that i'm pretty sure a lot of people that are, that are not very high on drake may are seeing the most like that's the one like man the and i i'm again i prefer Jaden daniels i've said this in several videos i still love drake may but i do prefer Jaden daniels and one of the main reasons is that he misses layups it's so weird he can make the most spectacular throw out of any quarterback you'll see in this draft class and then the next play he'll just miss the wide open layup it's so weird and that graphic perfectly explains it and that graphic also makes it seems like maybe he's not just missing layups maybe he's just missing a lot of things in general also somebody on reddit pointed out that the fact that drake may versus above average college defenses it just has not been very good now he also does give him one compliment in this and points out the touchdown to interception ratio that's pretty good but the completion percentage is not good there's a lot of talk about how Caleb Williams performs against top defenses. I thought it was only fair to highlight the performances from Drake May in 2022 and 2023 against some of his tougher opponents as well. So his average stat line is a 58.9 completion percentage, 286 passing yards on average, 2.4 touchdowns on average, and .75 interceptions on average against above average college defenses. In total, 19 touchdowns and 6 interceptions is pretty good, but at the same time, he threw under 55 completion percentage for four of the eight games in those games he was far from efficient with 53 percent 51 percent 51 percent and 44 completion percentage and then touchdowns were less than equal to his interception total in four of the eight games so he's super hot or cold when it comes to top defenses that he's faced in college that's another thing that's scary because i'm gonna do a whole Jaden daniels breakdown and but his situation is weird because it's like Drake May didn't have a great offense around him, weapons, offensive line, but then he also wasn't going against great defenses, whereas Jaden Daniels went against elite defenses, but he also had better receivers around him and arguably a better offensive line as well. So that's a really interesting conundrum. Again, I may do a whole Jaden Daniels version of this as well. Let me know if you want that. So now let's talk about Drake May overall. We have my boy Nick Ackrich over there at Pro Football Focus doing a pretty good synopsis of him. Elite over the middle of the field, plays on time and his structure, arm strength is insane, can make any throw from any position, and then when you say like a positive and a negative, has Josh Allen F it vibes, good and bad. But then the negatives, slight tendency to run in the sacks, and number two can get stuck on pre-snap reads. That that's actually sounds just about right. And then Mark Bullock and Nick Ackridge have a pretty decent and, and noteworthy back and forth because Mark Bullock took that and said, well, interesting, because watched my first game of him yesterday and thought he was super conservative, conservative, checking down when he had shots open down the field. Maybe I just caught a bad game, though. And then Nick replied, it's when he gets out of the pocket. That's when he has the Josh Allen superhero. I could definitely make this throw while being tackled vibe. So that's really interesting. So more so in the pocket, he's more conservative than you think. And then outside of the pocket is when he basically basically becomes Josh Allen. I think this is a good idea because I'm such an elite talent forcing things. And then you also have Dalton B. Miller saying that Drake May has just enough of the bozo gene to scare away the casuals, but just enough of the holy, that's high level quarterbacking to reel in the quarterback guys. You can see both worlds basically essentially kind of being right at times. And really, whichever side you're on, you have a game to prove your point to back your argument like if you feel like drake may is overrated you can tell people to just simply go watch the nc state game or even the virginia game but if you feel like drake may is going to be an elite quarterback you can point to the syracuse game amongst many others that you can point to from the 2023 season so it just really depends on which side you're arguing because we still have the combine we still have some pro days and things like that but at the end of the day the tape is done the tape is finalized he's not going to play another college game before he's drafted so at this point we're just fighting each other based on i see this thing and then the other side sees this thing but we're looking at the same quarterbacks it's really about what do you prioritize in you quarterback what do you prefer in a quarterback do you prefer for him to be good at this but you can deal with him being bad at this or vice versa really interesting now again me personally i love drake may but i do prefer Jaden daniels but i will be happy either way as a commanders fan i would be very happy but with that being said i think the best way to describe drake may is that when he's on he's on and literally looks like arguably the best quarterback in this draft when he's playing his best but the problem is in my opinion how often are you going to get that guy on a game to game basis, on a snap to snap basis, drive to drive basis. How often 
will you get that elite Drake May compared to how often you'll get, how did you miss that wide open receiver, Drake May? He has every trait and tool to be a top 10, top five quarterback at the NFL level. He has everything you need to reach that. But how often is he going to be able to put it together? And how soon can he put it all together? And then even once he does, how consistent will he be with that? So it's really interesting. Now, to me, especially with this coaching staff, with all of the proven quarterback development we have in this coaching staff, I feel like we can go crazy with either of the three quarterbacks. Because when you're doing a floor and ceiling comp, to any of these quarterbacks i personally feel like with the coaching staff that we just brought in with their proven ability to get elite quarterback play out of jalen hurts his best season his super bowl run in 2022 we have the quarterback developer the quarterback coach from that we have the the quarterbacks coach and offensive coordinator from when johnny manziel had his best season of his life the time that he had everybody fooled we have the quarterback guru that trained that took drake pat mahomes from high school recruit that most people didn't care about to first round pick for the chiefs we have the the, the quarterback guru that had Kyler murray win an offensive rookie of the year we have the head coach that enabled justin herbert to win offensive rookie of the year i mean we have so much co proven quarterback development on this staff that to me i feel like this staff will be able to get people closer to the ceiling comps than their floor comps so if you look at say Jaden daniels as I guess Lamar Jackson really more accurately like a Justin Fields or I guess like a Randall Cunningham or maybe you want to throw Deshaun Watson out there but faster you could I think he would be closer to that than what a lot of people feels like his, his, his floor is same thing with Drake May with this coaching staff and that's why it's kind of it sucks for Sam Howell because I feel like with this coaching staff if he had this coaching staff last year we probably wouldn't be able to consider drafting quarterback first of all we probably wouldn't even have a number two overall pick because our offense is clicking everything's clicking defense is playing better we probably make the playoffs even maybe we don't win a playoff game but we're not even thinking quarterback going into this offseason with this coaching staff even coaching up just sam howe so poor him but moving on assuming that a new regime new head coach new gm new offensive coordinator new basically owner new everything top to bottom literally I'm just assuming they're taking a quarterback, and I think even in Drake May's case, I feel like this coaching staff, if they get a hold of him, will be closer to the Justin Herbert, Josh Allen comp than some of the floors like Mitchell Trubisky or anything like that. And then, of course, if we somehow get Caleb Williams, I think this coaching staff can literally get potentially Pat Mahomes out of him, or at least the closest thing to it, because I don't think we'll ever see another Pat Mahomes ever, like in our lifetimes, but um, we'll get guys that are similar. We'll get guys with similar traits, similar positives and weaknesses, but Caleb Williams being literally Pat Mahomes is hard to just predict no matter what but i feel like this is the coaching staff this is why i'm so confident as a commanders fan no matter who we take out of these top three quarterbacks because i feel like we're going to get closer to their ceilings than anything else we it may not be immediately it may not be their rookie seasons but i think over time we'll eventually get there and then speaking of ceiling i want to know from the comment section how do you feel about drake may if you had to give me three comps the ceiling the middle ground and the floor what do you feel like his best comps would be? Because there's some really interesting ones. Mock Draft Guy YT on Twitter brought this up and started a thread, and everybody had their replies and things like that. And one of the most liked replies that I'm seeing is from Shannon Miller23. She has 63 likes. She says, Ceiling, Josh Allen, Middle Ground, Kirk Cousins, Floor, Mitchell Drabisky. That's pretty good. I kind of like that. And again, with this coaching staff, I feel like we'll be closer to the ceiling than either of those other two comps. But again, let me know in the comment section what you would give Drake May as far as his ceiling, middle ground, and floor for his comps as well. And that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned all of the content man again let me know first of all in the comment section how you feel about this video do you agree or disagree which side are you on that's the side that thinks drake may is overrated or underrated in a top three player arguably the best quarterback in this draft class who do you prefer who's your list me your top three quarterbacks in order between caleb williams Jaden daniels drake may let me know your list also let me know ceiling middle ground and floor comps for drake may and also 
Let me know if you want me to do an exact video like this for Jaden Daniels where we bring up stats and also how everybody around the league is feeling about them right now. Now, as we get closer to the draft, maybe we'll do a part two for all of these guys. Once we start after the combine, pro days and things like that, maybe we can do this again where we start to see, okay, scouts are saying this, NFC executives, AFC executives, GMs around the NFL are saying this and feeling this. So things could change from here to there by a mile. We'll see. So just let me know if you want a Jaden Daniels version of this. Let me know if even if you want a Caleb Williams version of a video like this. And then, of course, let me know after we have the combine and everything, we get close to the draft. If you want a part two for all of these draft prospects as well. So make sure you stay tuned. I really appreciate y'all. Can't wait. So much content, mock drafts on the way, all of that. So stay tuned. I really appreciate y'all. I'm going to catch y'all later. I'm out.